Welcome to day three of trying to remove the mast. Today we've made the decision to cut the pin with a sawzall. So uh, stay tuned and watch on. Well, we have ourselves prepared now. We've got the uh, saws all primed and ready to go. I've hooked up the mast crane again to take a little bit of weight off the, uh, the mast. I had visions of cutting through the pin and then watching it flip down onto the ground which I didn't want. So I'm not sure where the center of balance is so I've created sort of a, a sling uh, above the spreaders and below the spreaders to, to hold it. Hopefully it won't uh, get out of control. And uh, we're about to begin. We've got the, the hose here to uh, keep the blade cool so that we don't um, burn the blade. It's a carbide tip blade and uh, Tess is going to cheer while I work. It took about uh, two hours, but we got it done. The mast, as you can see, is off the boat. Let's go have a look. I'll show you. So Chester, the hero, came along with his sawzall and uh, five brand new blades. for it and it took about two hours so about an hour either side just grinding away grinding away and uh, we got her done you can see the pin still uh, nicely seized into the tabernacle and uh, you can see all the metal filing there left over sands mast here's the mast We did have a wee bit of a mishap, didn't we? We were using the mast crane to uh, put it over the side, and uh, I thought I had uh, gotten the center of balance on the mast, just about the, uh, the rope wrapped around the spreaders and a little bit below, um, but I miscalculated. The bulk of the weight of the mast is actually above the spreaders, so um, once I released the base of the mast, from the tabernacle, the uh, crane had enough weight on it that it just swung. Um, right at the top, that arm right there is hinged, and uh, once the weight of the mast was on it, it just swung over, and away it went. The outboard side of the mast when it went, and I thought I was going to go over, but I ducked. Rather than try and wrestle the thing and be a hero, I just let it go. And the roller furler was the unhappy casualty. I don't know if you can see just below the spreaders there. There's a kink right there. And then up at the top, there's another kink right there. Now, my understanding of these roller furling units is that once they're bent, they're garbage. So I'm going to have to do some research if that is the case or not. And... Uh, I might be buying myself a new roller further. Hope not. But uh, anyways, we press on and we learn as we go. Like I said in one of my previous videos, that I don't really know what I'm doing, making it up as I go along, and uh, having some successes, having some setbacks. But it's all good fun. And uh, now with the mast off, I'm free to take the chain plates and the bowsprit off. That's going to be my next major 
uh, removal job is the bowsprit because it's rotten and needs to be replaced and then the chain plates these guys they need to come off that's going to be a challenge because the um, carriage bolts go through the hull and um, the nuts are behind uh, I don't know what to call it siding so I'm gonna have to figure out one where they are and two how to get the siding off to access them do the boom kin but I think while I'm here and I've got all the hardware off it just makes good sense to uh, at least remove it if, you know um, fill the holes in it these guys here some old hardware on both sides and uh, refinish it check it for any rot I don't think there is rot in it because it's either teak or mahogany I'm not sure it's not fur uh, but we'll see get the hardware off one day at a time so for now it's uh, getting to be about six o'clock in the evening I'm about here after work at four and, uh, so it's either six or just after and uh, heaving 350 pounds worth of mast around and then the, the steps there uh, yeah, I'm tired I'm here to go home and have something to eat and uh, see the Dread Pirate Admiral well you guys have a good night fair winds following seas. God bless.